users and then terminating the username uh, and I'm going to go slash repos and that's even in a bit I'm online. Uh, and I'm going to return, oh is that the final stuff? Is that just bin? That's just bin. Uh, I'm going to return fetch URL. So give that URL to fetch which has been probably filled in. Uh, and I'm going to say dot then. I'm going to take the response I get and the fetch uh, probably will apply the method on these things called JSON which is going to just pass it effectively. So fetch is going to return the promise. Uh, who's familiar with promises? Sorry, that hard. So promises are effectively uh, a better way of dealing with asynchronicity. So instead of saying having a bunch of callbacks, you can effectively say this promise will effectively it will resolve at some point to a value or it will reject and throw an error, and you can then do it. With it. So what I'm saying here is, is fetch URL dot then is effectively when when it resolves when the data is given to me. I'm going to take the response which is passed in and then convert it to uh, and effectively pass it. This arrow function, by the way, is effectively the same as writing fetch URL dot then function response uh, return response dot JSON. So it's much shorter. Uh, you don't need the return as well when that's on one line like that. You can just return. Uh, I write a load of Ruby. I think for, for Rubyist, the top one looks a lot more familiar and nicer than the bottom one. Uh, it might take a bit of getting used to, but it's really nice. Okay. So if we go to app main.js, I'm going to import get repos from dot slash get repos. I can miss out the, the file extension. Uh, and this get repos here, because, because get repos exports something that's a default export, it doesn't have a name. So this get repos here doesn't mean anything. I could call this Jack, I could call it Phil, I could call it Peach, I could call it whatever I want. Uh, it doesn't matter at all. So what I can now hopefully do, I'm going to call get repos and give it, uh, no, let's give it Phil Nash. And I'm going to call them. Uh, you've probably got more impressive open source contributions than me. Uh, and I'm going to use the beauty of when you return a promise, you can just keep chaining these ends on, and they'll kind of work bubble through one after the other. Uh, and I just I just want to console log it. Uh, this will test a bunch of stuff. Great. So these hopefully are the first page of Phil's open source. We've got one called Actions SMS. Yeah, cool. Uh, and let's pick another one. Collabify. Yeah, nice. Okay, um, cool. So we managed to hit hit the um, the GitHub API, pull in some data using Promise Six. That's all sort of lovely. Uh, a very small thing that I only learned in Chrome just before I ever did this demo for the first time live. And every time I show people, about half the people have never seen it before. Uh, when, when you've logged out anything like an object to the console, you can right click on it and click Store Global Variable. That gives you this variable which refers to the thing you just logged. Uh, if you take one thing away from the talk, it's not the year six, it's that. That's, that's like the most useful thing I've ever discovered. Uh, really, really useful and it's like change how I do that a lot. Oh, no way. Oh, look at that. That is incredible. Okay, oh no. I've tried to form. This is why I don't go off script. This is why I do not go off script on the live demos. Is it, 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 it doesn't look not like that. Right. Oh. Oh my god. Right. Start that all over again. I don't think that happened. Oh no. Let's just start a new one. Right. Uh, okay, thanks for. I'm not going to do that again. Uh, cool, all right, so we can get a list of repos and that's kind of step one done. Um, but now I have, I basically want to show off more ES6. And what I'd like to do is take that, that object that GitHub returned that represents a repo and turn it into an instance of a class that represents a repository uh, for no better reason than I want to demo classes as well. Uh, so I'm going to create a file called repo.js. And again, I'm going to export default. This time I'm going to export an ES6 class. Uh, Proc that hates these. Uh, I don't mind them. Um, what's important about these classes, under the hood, they're still using the same prototypal stuff that JavaScript has always used. And you could do the same thing with classes using prototypes and object create and so on. Um, but the syntax here is, is a lot cleaner. This doesn't mean you should never just create object literals in JavaScript. I think there are a, a time and a place where a class is going to be useful, and it's kind of up to you to decide when that is. Um, but I'm going to give it a constructor. This is the, the method that is used when I, when I call um, new. On it, so I do the repo. The structure I say this dot name, object dot name, uh, and let's 
see how many stars Bill has. Um, this is stargazers underscore count, which is the best um, key for any guy uh, I could do a lot more fields, of course, I'm only going to care about those. Uh, so let's leave that alone. Let's go into app main. So I'm now going to import uh, repo from So once I've got these repos, I'm going to say repos equals repos dot map. You map over every repository and return a new instance of repo class with that repo class in. And I still want to answer a lot of them. If we refresh again, so now we've got a big array of repos. Uh, nothing too exciting going on. I've just created an instance of a thing. You can see it's got. Oh, <laughs> Oh, there you go. Number three. Um, cool. So we, we've got that class. That's lovely. Um, we've used, we use default exports again. What I'd like to do, we all know that the best way uh, in 2015 to put this on a page is to use a templating language, because um, that's, that's how it's done. So I'm going to do JSPN install uh, handlebars. The important thing to note here, and this is the main reason I use handlebars above anything else in this course, is that I didn't have to tell it where to find handlebars at that time. Usually you have to sell it to go via GitHub or go via NPM and install it back up. I didn't have to here, and it just knew to use GitHub and, and you know, component slash handlebars to JS repo. The reason that is is because there is a thing called the JSPM registry. And what this is is effectively a big JSON file of um, popular libraries uh, that, that people don't want to have to worry about how they should install them. And basically, um, also, if, if you ever try and install a library and it's not as obvious as you would like, you can't quite figure out, it's a bit of a weird name, uh, you should make a pull request to add it to the registry. There is, the logic here is basically any library that isn't where you'd imagine it to be or isn't in named obviously, just chuck in in the registry. And if we look for handlebars, we'll see it's there. Uh, the reason it's in here, in this case, it, it just lets people type just go install handlebars or install handlebars.js and it will go and get it and do it here. So it's just effectively, it just makes it easier to install certain things. Typically, you'll find hard to, hard to find things are in here as well as popular things. So, like Angular is in here, Foundation, uh, Famous, a bunch of stuff, Ember, and so on. I'm not sure you would never use JSPM, but I think this is like. Um, what I also want to do, so I can import these, um, so I'm going to create text files that I have in the bus template. So I can import them using SystemJS and JSPM. I'm going to use a thing called, I'm going to use a JS uh, text plugin. Now this bit isn't part, what I'm about to do isn't part of the spec. Uh, so this is the only place where we're going to deviate because there's some nice stuff that SystemJS gives us. The text plugin effectively lets us import text files as if they were JavaScript modules. The beauty of that is you can just do import, I'll show you, you can do like import template from a text file. You don't have to worry about when that text file is loaded, you don't have to deal with the callbacks or any of that. Once it's done, it will just, your code will run. It lets you like write asynchronous code as if it was synchronous, which is kind of the best of, of all the ones. Uh, so if I quickly correct file for that, I'm going to put repo.hps handlebars. Uh, it's going to be an li uh, with a heading, name, and then we'll just do stars. And this, these uh, can be brackets are just the, the handlebar syntax, which is also what, what MB uses. Uh, we've had quite a good crossover before. Uh, okay, and then if we go into, if I leave that file alone, back into main, I can say import template. Uh, I need two things first. I need to import handlebars. And I need to import the template uh, from dot slash repo dot hps. And then I'm going to do bang text. And this is, just to be clear, this is not part of the spec. This isn't a thing that will be in browser natively. The, the system API um, will probably allow for us to, to do this kind of thing because it's going to provide a bunch of hooks for basically when the modules are loaded and the lifecycle of that. Let's kind of inject functions at different points. But it certainly won't look like this. Uh, this bang text is basically telling system just to load the text plugin and use that to pass this file. So not part of the spec, but incredibly handy. Uh, and definitely, you definitely shouldn't not use this just because it's not part of the spec. Uh, so that's just going to load the map as a text file. I'll get that this template and it'll just be a string of what whatever was in that file. Uh, and then so what I've, now I've got these repos, I'm going to repose and the repos got that again. This time I use a regular function. I tend to use regular functions when it spans multiple lines. Uh, at fat arrow functions when it fits on one line. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do handlebars.compile uh, on the template. So that 
gives handlebars that will template or it has a function that you need to call with data that will use to populate the template. Uh, and that is going to be the repo. Because then handlebars can call like this, got name, it's got stars, and it will, it will give you the right thing back. So I can do that. Uh, now if I come to a lot of repos, we should just have lots and lots of HTML. Yeah, we do have lots and lots of HTML. Uh, and just to really hammer home the point is JSPM is really good at just letting you install anything and put it in via ES6. Uh, we've got to manipulate the DOM, so we're going to need jQuery. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and install jQuery. Again, jQuery is in that registry. It knows to go via GitHub. JSPM knows how to kind of deal with it all. Uh, we can import dollar from jQuery. Uh, I will stress this is not how you should do this in real life, uh, but it is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to append you use template strings again, ul, I'm sorry, uh, repos, which is a big array of HTML at this point, dot join, empty string, uh, close that ul. And it's production ready. Uh, if we refresh this now, uh, look at that, we've got a big list of, uh, of fills. There you go, we'll, we'll focus on that one. Um, we've got a big list of fills, open source uh, repositories. Which is kind of cool, there's a, there's a whole load of stuff going on there. All this stuff is being dealt with asynchronously. System Jess is pulling in all those different modules, but it's not executing your code until it's done it all. You don't, you know, all this stuff is happening in Ajax requests. This isn't happening synchronously. Uh, but the fact that you just can load stuff in and not have to worry about that is genius. I think that's why people really like using Common Jet and Browser Fire and there's a Quadjet. Quadjet there, everything has a 10 level deep in and callbacks. Um, this is like, just, it's, it's so good and it's a really nice way of organizing stuff. What, the main reason I would pick this over Browserify, aside from it being what the, the future, um, is that I'm not running any dev build or anything. The only thing I've got going is this tiny module called serve, which just chucks up a folder on a port so I can look at it in the browser. There is no task watching files to, to compile or do any of that. There's nothing else going on. System Jess and is just dealing with it all for me. And that, in terms of a dev workflow, is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the fact that I don't have to do that, and it's really, really nice. What people usually ask me at this point um, is what happens when something goes wrong. So usually with these kind of things, when, when code is being transpiled, the, the, the happy part is really happy, but the sad part is even more sad because it's very difficult to debug. Uh, so if I make like a typo, then I forget that. I just want to show you what happens uh, in the console, because it's, it's really neat, actually. So we get the error, but you get pointed exactly at where the error was. Um, which is like, so in terms of debugging, that's really nice. Uh, I've got to be entirely honest, don't ask me how it does this. Um, but what is even cooler, this happened in the last talk. Someone said to me, what happens if I chuck a debugger in? I, I chuck debugger commands in quite a lot to debug. And I thought, I was really disappointed he asked me because I really wasn't convinced it was going to work. Uh, and I'd never done, I don't do 